Hi, this is Simon, and welcome to another Marvelous Videos. One of the most iconic villains in the Spider-Man franchise, Doc Ock, has been around for ages. In fact, The Amazing Spider-Man, number three, which was published all the way back in July 1963, featured the debut appearance of the character, which was developed by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Doc Ock is shown to be a very brilliant, short-sighted, and slightly stocky mad scientist with four powerful and durable tentacles, which are the basis for the name he goes by, Dr. Octopus. Interestingly, Dr. Dr. Octopus has occasionally been presented as a troubled anti-hero and an ally of Spider-Man. In this video, we'll dive deep into his tentacled physiology. So, keep watching. Before we go into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. How did Dr. Octopus get fused to his mechanical arms? We can all agree that Doc Ock's most distinguishing features are his mechanical arms. In fact, many people are familiar with the tragic trope of the brilliant scientist who develops into a deadly enemy in all of its different iterations, whether they be in live action, animation, or comic books. However, even Doc Ock is a popular character and a fan favorite. Not everyone is aware of all the specifics of how his most distinct feature operates or what material his limbs are composed of. Well, here is what we know about his mechanical arms. Starting at the very beginning, Dr. Otto Octavius' arms were initially designed with a very good intentions. He realized that he needed a, to maintain a specific distance when handling radioactive materials properly because he was a scientist and needed to be safe while conducting studies and experiments. He thus constructed these tentacle-like arms that were supported by his chest and joined his two torso via a harness to address this issue. It was an invention that allowed him to navigate radioactive and volatile materials safely. However, unbeknownst to him, the mechanical arms were going to become permanent features of his body. The scientist experienced several losses in his personal life and then came something that would change him forever. A freak accident took place in his lab and it resulted in the explosion of many volatile liquids which exposed him to radiation. Dr. Octopus's brain was irreparably damaged as a result of the accident, which had serious repercussions and swiftly turned the scientist into a megalomaniacal criminal. Additionally, the mechanical arm fused to his body and he developed the ability to mentally manipulate his limbs as a result of the explosion and radiation exposure. He was subsequently given the moniker of Dr. Octopus because of the way that the mechanical limbs looked like tentacles and since then he has fought Spider-Man and other heroes using the mechanical arms as weapons. The mechanical arms are definitely iconic in the appearance and are hard to forget. Everything you need to know about his tentacles. Doc Ock's physiological connection to his limbs, which he developed following the lamp disaster, is what gives him his superhuman skills. As a result, he has mental control over the machinery and can use it for many things, more than just keeping himself safe in the lab. Now that we've discussed how his mechanical arms got fused to him, let us get into the details and come to the functions that they can perform. His body is encircled from the lower chest to the waist by a stainless steel harness that has four telescoping prehensile titanium steel tentacles that can be operated electrically and psychologically. Three single jointed pincers measuring about five inches in diameter are at the tip of each tentacle. The pincers can twist like a screwdriver while rotating 360 degrees in reference to the arm. Each tentacle segment is made up of four thin overlapping layers of titanium nobium steel that are covered in four high efficiency electric motors. The titanium steel alloy is light and has a high melting point Point, high thin wall stiffness and high tensile strength. Since the initial accident when the tentacles first fused to Doc Ock, they have been altered to contain high efficiency battery packs that allow movement even when the main power supply is turned off. Additionally, each arm has its own micro circuit control module, allowing it to carry out specific pre programmed acts in the event that Octopus loses consciousness. Each arm's control module has enough pre programmed conditional replies stored in its memory chip to allow it 
it to carry out a somewhat sophisticated series of activities, which are incredibly helpful in the event that they have to save his life. Moving on to something rather cute. For Dr. Octopus, the tentacles are not simply instruments. He actually grew to consider them as family. He frequently refers to them in the comics as his beauties or sweeties, and his affection for them has even permeated into cinematic adaptions. Interestingly, each of them was given a name by actor Alfred Molina, who plays Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2, and the puppeteers who controlled the tentacles. The names were Harry, Flo, Larry, and Mo, and they sound pretty regular if you don't count the fact that they are deadly mechanical arms. We must admit, it is quite cute that he named all of his mechanical arms since it added an element of humanity to the character. Coming to the abilities of the tentacles, first of all, they are incredibly strong. The original tentacles have a lifting capacity of about 8 tons per tentacle. Further, Otto was also able to lift up to 24 tons, providing he used one of the tentacles to support himself. Each tentacle has the acceleration of a jackhammer and is capable of moving at speed of 90 feet per second. The gripping force of each tentacle is 170 pounds per square inch. Otto was able to overwhelm and destroy the Hulk after creating adamantium tentacles, and the tentacles he deploys as the superior octopus are strong enough to defeat Strong Guy. So to sum it up, you don't want to be in the way of Doc Ock and his tentacles, especially if you encounter him in his superior octopus form. The other thing the tentacles can do include helping Doc Ock climb walls and even travel horizontal distances. Dr. Octopus is capable of climbing stone, brick, or concrete walls by tearing handholds or grips into the wall surface by leveraging the inherent strength of his tentacles and pincers. Octopus can also move across horizontal distances by using his tentacles. He can move as though he is running on stilts when his tentacles are fully extended, either employing two of them for stability or four for increased speed. Weirdly enough, Octopus can also feel fundamental sensations with his robotic arms, despite the lack of nerve endings over the entire length. This is because the electrical connections have been constructed from his chest strap to his spine as a result of the mutagenic mutations brought on by the radiation exposed during the accident. Dr. Octopus can therefore mentally experience tactile feelings by sensing the electrical resistance that the electric motors in the pincers experience when they touch or grip an object. Further, he has psychic control of the tentacles, as far as we know. However, what is interesting is that even when his mechanical arms have been detached from his body and are removed from him and there is a great distance between them, Doc Octopus can still control their actions. Psionically. Additionally, they have the capacity for telescoping. At full contraction, each tentacle is about 6 feet long, although it has a maximum length of 24 feet. Last but not least, if spun like a large fan, the tentacles can also produce winds of 50 miles per hour. Why did his body start to decay? Considering that Dr. Octopus used his arms as a result of being exposed to radioactive and volatile substances, it's not a surprise that at one point his human body started to decay. While he did have mechanical arms, the rest of him was still human. Further, as is mentioned in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1, issue number 600, the regular beating that he endured from Spider-Man as a result of constantly going up against the heroic web-slinger also had a big part to play in the decaying of his body. The beatings that had made Doc Ock so sick that he was told by the doctors that he had only one year to live before his body decayed completely. Upon knowing this, he becomes even more ruthless and even attempts to disrupt May's wedding, but that is a story for another day. Although what is interesting is that he soon reached the point when his body began to entirely fail, rendering him quadriplegic. Doc Ock then created a new armored suit for himself out of nothing but his tentacles in order to safeguard his own body and essentially survive. This new suit possessed four more tentacles that aided in his mobility, allowing him to give his decayed body some much needed rest. Dr. Octopus also possessed a set of adamantium tentacles. Adamantium is a very well-known fictional metal alloy, most associated with Wolverine and his claws. It is considered to be an extremely dense and indestructible metal, so it's not surprising that at one point Dr. Octopus traded his regular mechanical arm for adamantium ones, although it is important to note that his tentacles did not have the same advanced formula as Wolverine's claw. However, they were nonetheless stronger than his normal ones and virtually impenetrable. Older comic 
book fans might recall the origins of these adamantium weapons, and they can be traced back to Roger McKenzie, Frank Miller, Bob Sharon, and Joe Rosen's Daredevil, number 165, from 1980. Before being defeated by Daredevil, Octavius had stolen a shipment of adamantium from Glen Industries and used it to make new weapons, and then lost them for years. Dr. Octopus finally gets to deploy his new adamantium arms in revenge of the Sinister Six, showing off their strength. He also utilizes them to defeat the Hulk. Dr. Octopus sees the Hulk during their altercation and started pounding the Green Goliath mercilessly with his metal arms. Otto Octavius defeated the Hulk with relative ease, hurling him outside the warehouse and killing the monster instantly. Although, somewhat surprisingly, this win was mostly made possible by Dr. Octopus's adamantium arms. Otto was, however, denied the chance to keep the upgraded arms, and years later, when the Hulk reverted to his stronger green form, he simply hauled Otto within range and used a finger to knock him unconscious. Hand her over! Of course! Why does he wear shades all the time? You might have noticed Dr. Octopus perpetually wears shades. While it does look sort of cool, the shades are more than just a style statement. It turns out that Dr. Octopus's eyes were affected during the time of his exposure to radiation and volatile chemicals, and the same accident that turned him into a tentacled villain is the one that made his eyes light-sensitive. Thus, he constantly wears shades to shield his eyes from direct sunlight, it being artificial or natural light. This edition was made in Spider-Man 2, the movie, and the comic book adapted to the change, incorporating it into their material as well. Additionally, he had myopia before the event, so he was accustomed to wearing glasses. The iconic shades were also utilized by the ultimate version of Dr. Octopus to conceal the accident's wounds that left scars around his eyes. You're not Peter Parker. <sighs> I am so confused right now. How was Dr. Octopus resurrected after being killed? Comic book villains are infamous for dying and then promptly coming back. And Doc Ock is no exception. The Crazy Kane, a Peter Parker clone, killed Dr. Octopus in a brutal fashion in the spectacular Spider-Man issue 221. Following his passing, Octavius' pupil, Carolyn Trainer assumed control as Dr. Octopus 2 until the original Doc Ock was ultimately revived by a division of the enigmatic ninja cult known as the Hand. In a major turn of events, even though Octavius had learned Peter Parker's secret identity just before he passed away while treating Parker for a fatal virus produced by the Vulture, he forgot about this crucial piece of information when he was resurrected. This was because the memories he acquired came from a computer chip that Carolyn Trainer had given him and which contained his recorded recollections. At the time of his passing, that recent memory had not been stored. Octavius then became involved in a conspiracy involving the use of prosthetic limbs as a mind control tool to build an army of minions and attempted to construct his own personal assassin in the form of a monstrous mutant entity he dubbed Spider-Woman. He also had to cope with Carlisle, an egotistical but talented scientist who attempted to murder Octavius and constructed his own version of the usurper's harness. Carlisle admired Octavius Octavius' power and wanted it for himself. Later, over the course of trying to kidnap a Palestinian ambassador, Octavius reappeared in an effort to stir up trouble for unclear motives. Spider-Man and the Kiwi Kid, his temporary sidekick, foiled his scheme. Then Octavius was taken by Rikers Island, where he was given drugs and indoctrinated in order to defeat the Green Goblin. The Green Goblin and Spider-Man were enraged in combat on the Brooklyn Bridge when he intervened, and the two villains were hit by lightning and thrown into the river below. Days later, the octopus was brought out and had no memory of what had happened. What we can take away from Doc Ock's story is that dying and coming back is not easy, and neither is it fun. However, one does have a hell of a tale to tell, just like Octavius now does. How does he transplant his mind into Spider-Man? Okay, gear up, because this is where things get quite crazy. Dr. Octopus had once managed to transplant his mind into Spider-Man's body, allowing him to literally become the friendly neighborhood web-slinger. Otto Octavius transferred his mind into Spider-Man's body with the help of a brain-swapping Octobot. He was able to deceive every member of Peter's family and circle of friends, right from Mary Jane Watson to Aunt May to the Avengers, because he was able to maintain and access all of Peter's memories. Moments before 
the villain's corpse disintegrated, Peter's psyche was implanted into Octavius's dead body. Luckily, in Amazing Spider-Man number 700, a team of supervillains freed Octavius's physical form from jail. Peter then built a life support system for Octavius in collaboration with the evil trapster, giving him an additional 700 minutes of life so that he could figure out how to reverse the brain swap performed by Doc Ock. Otto decided to keep everyone Peter knew in a safe room in the Stark Tower and wait for him alone. As part of his plan, he diverted the other Avengers with enormous Octobots around the world, knowing that Peter would seek assistance from Tony Stark after realizing that Peter, in Doc Ock's body, had escaped from prison. They finally came face to face and they dueled till they both fell from the tower. Peter was fatally wounded in Doc's body. Peter faced another massive blow when Otto revealed that he was wearing a carbonadium helmet, which rendered his brain fully inaccessible for the Octobot brain swapping function. Otto then gave Parker a fatal punch as he declared his last win over him, causing Dr. Octopus's body to take his dying breath. Otto was then made to relive Peter Parker's most painful memories and experiences as Spider-Man by Peter himself before he entirely disappeared. This helped Otto understand the responsibility that came with his superhuman abilities. Otto informed Peter that he did not desire this, but they were powerless to reverse the change. Otto finally made a commitment to Peter to carry on his legacy as Spider-Man. Later, he understood that in order to surpass Peter Parker as Spider-Man, he needed to become a better man as well as a better Spider-Man than he previously had been as Dr. Octopus. Unfortunately, Otto Octavius's time as Spider-Man ultimately did not go as planned. The Green Goblin launched an all-out assault on New York City, endangering Otto's new scientist girlfriend, Anna Marie, and Otto had to admit that he could not defeat the Goblin, while the real Spider-Man could. Otto had believed that he would be a superior Spider-Man to Peter Parker, but that belief turned out to be baseless. Fortunately, a little bit of Peter's personality remained in Otto's mind, so after Otto stood aside, Peter took over. In fact, Otto actively wiped his own memories and consciousness from Peter's body and essentially sacrificed himself for his girlfriend, allowing Peter to take over. However, he is a brilliant scientist after all and had a plan. Peter was unaware that Otto had recreated the living brain, a robotic villain from the Spider-Man series, and installed his own mind within the machine, where it lay waiting, biding time until it was perfect for him to acquire a new body. He gave up on stealing Spider-Man's body and instead began looking for his own corpse so that he could recreate his physical self while living inside an Octobot. He subsequently regained his old body and tentacles, becoming the OG Dr. Octopus once again. Can Dr. Octopus reproduce? This one seems to be a burning question and we have the answers. Otto Octavius met his wife Rosaline in college when he was in his mid-twenties and working towards a science degree. Rosaline was studying English literature at the time. She attempted to explain T.S. Eliot while he attempted to explain the theory of relativity. Kind of cute, eh? They kept their communication honest and open, which resulted in a long and fulfilling marriage. However, they were never able to conceive a child together. Now, there is no information on whether Otto was infertile or if Rosalie had any medical issues. However, one can speculate. It has been speculated that Otto might have been rendered infertile as a result of his experimentation and work with radioactive and volatile substances. Radiation is known to cause infertility in men and lower their testosterone levels. So it is entirely possible that his profession and scientific curiosity is a reason that he never had children. Thus, Dr. Octopus cannot reproduce. Can he program his tentacles to function without him? Surely a scientist who is known to be as brilliant as Dr. Octopus was able to program his tentacles to function without him. Yes, you bet he was capable of doing so. Dr. Octopus continues to pose a threat even after being knocked out. He actually has tentacles that can function on their own if necessary. In fact, we touched upon this at the beginning of the video, and here is a breakdown of what he did to make them capable of functioning on their own. The tentacles were programmed by Doc Ock to continue working if he felt unconscious, and this is especially useful when in battle. However, the extent of what they can achieve differs. They sometimes have no choice but to hurry Doc Ock to safety and wait for him to awaken. Sometimes they can continue to fight even after Dr. Octopus has passed away, as in the alternate future narrative Spider-Man Reign. Despite the fact that it is a super cool power and has both offensive and defensive usages, it is still preferable to avoid pushing them past their breaking point. 
Does Dr. Octopus have senses in his mechanical arms? Just because his tentacles are mechanical does not mean that they do not have the ability to feel things. The mental connection between Doc Ock and his tentacles is reciprocal. In fact, they might be mechanical, but they are truly an intrinsic addition to his body, much like a leg or an arm. He thus experiences that agony when the tentacles are injured, similar to what he would feel for any other limb. Given that the tentacles lack nerve endings, how does this function? Well, the answer is simple, electricity. The harness of the tentacles and Doc Ock's spine are electrically linked. Thus, Doc Ock is able to feel through the electrical resistance that is produced when a surface is touched by a tentacle's pincer. While this is an interesting power, it is not so great if you frequently face Spider-Man and get beaten up. We can only imagine the pain. How does he shoot fire from his tentacles? We already know that his tentacles are extremely powerful, but the cherry on the cake is that they can shoot fire. When threatened, the majority of common octopi and other similar sea creatures spray ink on their enemies. Similar actions are taken by Dr. Octopus, although they are done in a more aggressive way. His tentacles have the ability to literally shoot fire. It appears that he was able to accomplish this by incorporating a tiny flamethrower into the head of each tentacle. The pincer's meeting point is exactly in the center, allowing them to set things blaze. Doc Ock is a master at making himself more dangerous, and this is a classic example of that. Doc Ock has only been seen using this power in the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man attraction at Universal Studios, so the canoness of his flamethrowers, however, is up for debate. What do you think? Tell us in the comments. Ever since the third issue of Spider-Man's comic book, published in 1963, Doc Ock has been a constant thorn in the side of the heroic wall crawler. Doc Ock has established a reputation as a formidable supervillain thanks to his brilliant brain and extraordinarily potent mechanical arms. He's also a fantastic opponent for Spider-Man. Both were teased for being science geeks, both wanted credit for their achievements, and both were inspired by eight-legged animals. They are one another's mirror images. What do you think about Doc Ock's amazing mechanical arms. Should the adamantium ones make a comeback? And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.